White House Press Secretary Sarah Sanders. Sarah, thank you for joining us uh, again. So where does this idea stand right now? Uh, look, this is an option on the table. I mean, we've talked about uh, a number of different things over the last two years that we'd love to see happen. Certainly, this wouldn't be our first choice because ideally we wouldn't be dealing with the massive influx of illegal immigrants coming across the border. The crisis that we have, both from a national security and humanitarian standpoint, uh, is if Democrats would step up and help the president fix the laws, this all could go away. We wouldn't be having this discussion, and that would be the best thing for the country, and that would certainly be the best way to solve this crisis but and Sarah, fix this problem. When, when if this... Democrats continue to be unwilling to do that, then we're going to look at all of our options, and we don't want to put all of the burden on one or two border communities. And Democrats have stated time and time again they support open borders, they support sanctuary cities. So let's spread out some of that burden and let's put it in some of those other locations uh, if that's what they want to see happen and are refusing to actually help fix the problem. But as you know, when this story broke, on Thursday, White House officials said flatly that the idea had been rejected. We know that President Trump called the former Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen, and she told him that her legal team reviewed it. It's simply not legal. So how can you continue to push this? I, look, we have uh, that was brought up at a staff level, and it was determined at that time that logistically uh, there were a lot of challenges, and it probably didn't make sense to move forward. And the idea did not go further. Not uh, just the logistically, heard legally. The idea. He likes it, so. Well, we're looking to see if there are options that uh, make it possible um, and doing it in a full and thorough and extensive review. The president likes the idea um, and Democrats have said they want these individuals into their communities. So let's see if it works and everybody gets a win out of it. Again, this is not the ideal situation. The ideal solution is real simple. It's for Congress, particularly Democrats in Congress, to sit down with the president, do their jobs and help us stop this awful crisis crisis that's taking place at our border. It can't be denied or ignored anymore. Democrats, including Obama's secretary from Homeland Security, are now acknowledging that this is a crisis. They can either deal with it at the border and stop it from getting worse, or they're going to have to take on some of that burden in their communities if that becomes an option. Again, that's not our first choice, probably not even our second or third choice, but we have to look at all options as long as Democrats refuse to do their jobs and fix the problem. I, I don't understand why the president is attracted to it at all. It actually could encourage more immigrants. It would be easier for these migrants to put down roots in the U.S. in sanctuary cities. So it seems to run counter to his objectives. Uh, again, this isn't the president's plan. His top priority is to stop the flow of illegal immigration coming into our country to begin with. Democrats and courts, frankly, keep tying the president's hands and stopping him from being able to do that. We have a massive number of people that are already here. We need to uh, take away some of that burden on all of the communities that are along the border, uh, like San Diego and El Paso, and look at other options. Again, not our first choice. Ideally, Congress would fix the problem. They continue to kick the can down the road and not deal with the problem in front of them. They'd rather spend all of their time attacking the president and on these baseless and taxpayer funded investigations instead of doing what they were elected to do. And that's actually solve problems. We hope that they will find at some point over the course of their uh, next several days, weeks and months to do their jobs and help the president solve real problems, whether it's this one, whether it's health care or whether it's the other hundred things that we're trying to work on that they seem to want to just continue to ignore. You know, the New York Times and CNN are also reporting that on his trip to the border last week, the president, uh, Trump, urged uh, Kevin McAllen and now the acting secretary of Homeland Security to close the border uh, and that, that he told my border agents there not to let to not let migrants in. According to CNN, the agents were told by their leaders that they had to follow the law and they'd be personally liable if they did what the president said. Uh, Homeland Security officials were pretty alarmed by what they heard down there at the border last week. Homeland Security uh, pushed back on this, as has the president. They both uh, pushed back Secretary Nielsen as well as the president. Uh, look, George, I don't know about you, but CNN isn't usually my first stop for a good source, particularly not when it comes to this president. Um, the president is actually the president trying to enforce laws, not go around them. Um, we're a country of laws, and we have a president who supports that and is not asking anybody to do anything outside of those bounds. In fact, he's asking Congress to step 
step up and give uh, greater legal standing so that they can do more to uh, stop this crisis. Uh, no one's trying to skirt the law and certainly not being encouraged by the president to you do so. You took on CNN there. The president also took on the New York Times last night in a tweet uh, about this story. And he said that they never even called to check for the truth. But the reporter, Maggie Haberman, says they actually sent emails to the White House press office, three emails that were acknowledged, and they were simply refused to comment. So who's telling the truth there, the president or Maggie Haberman? Uh, look, the New York Times regularly steps out of bounds. Even when we respond and tell them something's not true, they still run with the story. Uh, I'm not sure the particular story that's in question on this front. Uh, but again, I'm going to take the word of the president versus CNN or the New York Times any day of the week. But the Times did call and check, correct? I, I, again, I'm not sure about this particular story. I'd have to look back to see what story they're talking about. Um, we do talk to them regularly, and a lot of times we push back on a story, and that's simply not enough for them. They like to run with anonymous sources uh, on the regular basis about this president. It's an unprecedented amount of negative coverage that not only them, but a number of other outlets spend over 90 percent of the coverage about this president is negative, despite the fact that our country is doing extremely well. Our economy is booming. ISIS has been defeated in Syria. We've gotten rid of countless regulations that have allowed our economy to grow, that have allowed more jobs to pour in, that have made us an energy dominant country again. Uh, the country is doing extremely well, yet if you looked at the media and the coverage, you would think that the whole place was falling apart. Uh, I think that is a real problem and certainly something the president's going to continue to call out. I think every president feels feels they get subject to unfair coverage every once in a while. The question not is, is whether or not that you was accurate. You would know, accurate. George. You've certainly right. been there yourself. Uh, I, uh, absolutely. <laughs> sitting but in the, this the question, position. But the question, yeah, but that's the question, though, is that it, who's telling the truth about whether or not they were contacted. But I do want to move on uh, right now. The president has also been sending out those tweets uh, this week about Congresswoman Ilhan Omar uh, attacking her for how she characterized the 9-11 attacks and included in that tweet those images of the towers burning. And, and, you know, that's drawn a lot of criticism from Democrats, including the House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. And this from former Congressman Beto O'Rourke. This is an incitement to violence against Congresswoman Omar, against our fellow Americans who happened to be Muslim. She was subject to a death threat last week. Certainly the president is uh, wishing no ill will uh, and certainly not violence towards anyone, but the president is absolutely and should be calling out uh, the congresswoman for her not only one time, but history of anti-Semitic comments. Uh, the bigger question is, why aren't Democrats doing the same thing? It's absolutely abhorrent, the comments that she continues to make and has made, and they look the other way. Uh, I find what her uh, comments to be absolutely disgraceful and unbefitting of a member of Congress, and I think that it's a good thing that the president is calling her out for those uh, comments, and the big question is, why aren't Democrats doing it as well? And not just doing it, but doing it by name. They do these watered down pushbacks uh, that frankly, they feel like give them enough cover, but aren't really getting the job done. Sarah Sanders, thanks for your time this morning. You bet. Thanks so much, George. I appreciate it. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.